This is for 2011. Um, I'll start with the members of the board at that time. Amy Garber was the chair. Other members were Paul and Joyce Jurgensen, Esther Riley, Kelly Love, myself, and Al Carter. Amy and Joyce resigned from their board positions, and Bob Hopkins and Craig Harvey stepped in as substitutes. The board worked on the following issues. They created clear definitions for job descriptions of interfaith staff. They worked on creating a handicap parking space. They recreated a procedure for the replacement of board members. We worked on updating the website, an ongoing task. Uh, discussed the need for contact, contracts for interfaith staff as well as establishing salaries. We discussed a landscaping plan. Discussed the need for curtains for the south part of the sanctuary due to the blinding sunlight during the services. Clearly that was taken care of. Worked on the shift of primary responsibilities from Dave to Delleth. Dave, at that time, planned on being here for eight months, taking the other four months as sabbatical, and Delleth was to take over, and indeed took over, administrative duties full-time, and was designated the head of spiritual leadership when Dave was absent. So, some of the special events in 2011. The annual yard sale brought in $1,110, not bad. We also had a big work party to fix items in the center, deep clean the walls and carpets and clean out items. And it was actually, it only took us like about three hours of intensive work because there was a lot of people here. Looked really nice. Uh, work on the upstairs office continued to be completed by the end of December 2011. Barbara Brodsky and Aaron came to a special event. I believe it was one of the earlier channing, channelings that this group, the interfaith group, experienced, and they've come back several times more. Erin Fry, some of you might remember her, was ordained as an interfaith minister in New York City with Dave Bell in attendance, and she was ordained again here at the center, and we had a party like we usually do. Uh, the Judy Bell Service Award was established with, <laughs> with Judy as the first recipient. recipient, recipient. Um, Don Schwartz started setting up the Interfaith a cappella choir. We had a Chantella Curtan, or a sacred channeling, um, offered in October, led by Benji and Heather Wertheimer. And I think that was one of the earlier ones that was offered here. And Dave began reaching out to other faith communities and requesting that speakers join us for Sunday services. And that started a really nice tradition. Youth of Spir Youthful Spirits, as run by Heidi Kaminsky and Kelly Love, worked with kids uh, about how to be of service to others, among other projects. They did the crop walk, which was Don Schwartz's idea, doing a change collection for buying books and helping the Ann Arbor tent com community. And of course, we were once again uh, entertained by their annual holiday play. Uh, Cafe 704 and feature featured so the following, among other people, Scott Winnie and friends, McWinnie, Sorry, big fella. I knew I'd screw that up. I'm so nervous in front of you. Bill Connors and Billy King, Dave Mosier. Bliss, including our own dear Don Allen, Alora Massaro, and Craig Brand performed. Then they came back in, I think, October, along with Algorithm, Heart's Compass, which includes our own very Carol Bardenstein and Lindsay Passmore, as well as Lisa War Warren, who performed on the flute, I believe. Uh, it was a great night, powerhouse. 
Um, there are several people who have come and gone from the caring committee, but I do want to make note that this year, in 2011, Marilyn Alf joined, and we know what a powerhouse she was and how she eventually take over the committee. <laughs> and finally, I'll leave you with a small portion of Dave Bell's talk, Rethinking 9-11, which he presented on 9-11-2011. We must recognize the heroism on that day, mourn with the people who had losses, but we must also teach the power of forgiveness. When we extend ourselves in the love that we are, that is when the world can change, not because we sent our sons over to make war. One energetic expression at a time, one consciousness at a time, and when we allow the light that we are the love that we are, to shine in the world, that's when love will manifest in the world. Let us see this event as simply a prayer request, a call for love, and to let us pray that we have the capacity to see in ourselves the infinitely loving people we are and to act out of that reality. More true interface sta statement could not have been made. <laughs>